Kiwi nappy company Rascal and Friends, backed by MBR rich lister Nick Mowbray, is launching into exports, partnering with some of the world's biggest retailers, including Coles, Walmart and Tesco. The online business was started two years ago by brother and sister Grant Taylor and Louise Stainthorpe, after the mother of four complained to him about the struggle to find a nappy that performed well and was affordable. Mr Mowbray, founder of toy company Zuru, is a childhood friend of Mr Taylor, and along with investing money into the nappy firm, has helped with its new marketing strategy. They spoke to MBR's Fiona Rotherham. So you've got to deal with some of the world's leading retailers. How did that come about and what, what, what's your export strategy? Well, it's, uh, it's obviously started in New Zealand and it's sort of jumped from there. Um, Nick has, has been the driver behind the, the global push um, and I'm sort of more, I handle more of the product side of it. So, yeah. Yeah, so we, we um, obviously Grant hit me up probably a year and a half ago, yeah, a little bit longer maybe, when yeah. I was on holiday in Bali and said, yeah. come and have a look, I'm doing nappies. Yeah. And I'd always sort of been looking at um, some of these sort of digitally driven, data driven um, challenger brands that were sort of popping up in the US and sort of challenging these big stodgy categories, brands like Dollar Shave or Harry's Method, um, Halo Top Ice Cream, all of them growing to sort of multi-billion dollar valuations in only a few years and all of them using a very similar formula. So I was kind of interested in, 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 in looking at, you know, an FMCG brand and, you um, seeing if we could take on sort of these big FMCGs and big stodgy categories and make it relevant and aim, again to sort of new audiences or new millennial um, mums. So we got to rolling it out in New Zealand and uh, it's been incredibly successful, um, sort of well past our wildest dreams. I think it was one of Foodstuff's most successful private brand label launch in, in history. Um, and uh, and now, yeah, we're, we're sort of hyper and hyper growth mode. We're launching with all of the biggest retailers in the world. So I think we'll roll out to 25 countries over the next uh, six months to a year. So we're launching it's with Walmart, uh, Walmart, Tesco's, Coles. Um, so how did you get in with those guys? Because that's a hard bit, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not actually the product. It's, it's how do you get in with them? Yeah, I mean, obviously we had a great product, um, but uh, really Nick has had those distribution channels available from you know, his, uh, the Zuru side of things. So I think we went in with a very... Um, we had to formulate a commercial strategy that made sense. And so I often say that we're not necessarily selling nappies. We're solving problems for our retail partners. So we're going in and really trying to set um, or solve a set of commercial problems that, that, that they face in the category. And then we've combined that with making a brand relevant to new consumers. And, you know, when Grant first, you know, showed me what he was working on, he was saying, look, you know, you know, Pampers and from P&G and, and Kimberly Clark with Huggies, they're both sort of nine, ten billion dollar brands, but they're sort of still old. They still have old licensed characters, mm-hmm. Disney, Winnie the Pooh on them, yeah. and that sort of you know, like how do we make this relevant, trendy, something that mums you know want to picture their kids on on social media? And sort of I sort of combine that knowledge with looking. I know the guys at Warby Parker and Casper, and I've sort of had a lot of interaction with them. And I kept thinking, wow, maybe this category could could really be something. Mm-hmm. And one of the great things is is that sort of mums are, uh, are some of the most engaged social and digital um, audiences in the world. Yeah. They're always on there. So the strategy of, of marketing in that way was was something we were interested in doing. So yeah, it's, it's obviously we have over the relations that we work with every major retailer in 120 countries around the world. So you know we didn't have a relationship in these categories, um, but we have the credibility. Um, sure. with all of these major yeah. retailers. So they believe in what we um, bring to them, um, I guess. So that credibility has gone a long way, but we still had to go in. So to prove the model behind yeah, it. Yeah, so. we still had to go in and they sort of look at us to begin with, like sort of sideways. And then <laughs> kind of like we start doing, you know, giving our commercial strategy, mm-hmm. which is really disruptive and really innovative. And by the end of the meeting, yeah. it often is like goes for an hour, it ends up going for two hours. Then we end up being pulled into yeah. having all senior management pulled in. And by the end of it, we're in a yeah. seven hour long meeting with all the senior management at these the biggest retailers flights, in the world. Right? All the way home. Yeah, missed, missed a fair few flights. Third meetings. So. So can we just take a step back? How did yeah. you actually start the company in the first place, Grant? So it was um, my sister and I, uh, Louise. We, we sort of, I, as Nick was saying earlier, I sort of saw a, an area where I thought that it was an old stodgy category that could be disrupted. Do you um, have kids with, yourself? No, I don't, but my sister does. So she's still yet to change a nappy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. I put my hand up on that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Louise is very much, my sister is very much, the. she's got four boys. So, um, yeah, poor girl. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's, she's been huge in the development. 
excitement behind it and, and knowing exactly what she want she wanted. Um, obviously, we saw the vision and, and what it could be. Um, and so, we, how does it how does it differ from previous brands? Is it is it just appealing to a younger demographic? Yeah, I think or? it's definitely a millennial. Um, type of look at it um we've got we as nick was saying earlier we have our, our customer base is very interactive on social media so uh you know we, we we marketed something that was quite cool looking um but different and that sort of um, created that conversation online also on trend right so we have pillars to the brand one of those major pillars is no nasty so no formaldehyde no chlorine mm. bleaching no lotions mm. no latex and so very much being on trend in terms of the transparency of that with mums yeah. and being on trend with what mums are, are wanting now. So that's sort of one of our key pillars, as well as being trendier and cooler than the, than the, than the older brands. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, and, and then Louise and Grant have done an incredible job on the actual product. So there's like seven core innovations within the product that basically yeah. means that mums, I, we just, I was at the baby show on the weekend. Yeah, I was at the baby show. And it's amazing it listening to how mums truly, truly love the brand and what Louise and Grant have done in terms of developing a, a product which is in my opinion, probably better than those major brands, Pampers and and Huggies, the core innovations within the product are really, really smart. And they sort of, they're all small innovations, but I think cumulatively they come together to create something that's quite compelling in terms of a product that works um, better than most on the market. So you think what appeals to a Kiwi um, mother will appeal to, or father, um, appeals to um, a global market? Well, we we, we look at the product in in something that's similar to the New Zealand market. So we are rolling out a similar product product in those markets that are that are same So what climate. countries are you going to start off? Um, so we're launching in uh, the UK with Tesco's, we're launching in Canada with Walmart, we're launching in Mexico with Walmart, Brazil with uh, Carrefour, Australia with Coles, um, all throughout Asia. So we're launching with Red Mart, Lazada, uh, Dairy Farm, Tesco's Thailand, um, we're launching in China. Um, earlier in the year, we're just signing deals with France, with Carrefour, with Co-op in Italy, uh, Etica in Sweden. So we're, we're, we're going basically for the number one mm. supermarket in every territory um, for launch. We're and exclusive we're, to that. We're supermarket. pretty much, we've only nine months in the market in New Zealand and we've taken a pretty big market share. <laughs> um, chunk. So you've got this big rollout planned. How are you going to fund it? It's, uh, it's very much self fund yeah. same, same way as we built Zuru, um, mm. to be fair. Like we built Zuru. Um, we started with like what twenty thousand dollars and built it to over half a billion without ever borrowing a single cent or, or you know having any loans or using any banks, right? So we very much um, run a model or a commercial model that allows us to self fund. And that um, and you can do that with us with us global rollout in so many countries at once. Yeah, right? like I think it's definitely um, it's tight. We have, to, know, fun, we have to fun. We have to fun part of it, right? Yeah, like, we got to fun so part of it, but it's generally it's not. We're going to have to go too too deep to the hole to, to be able to do it. And, um, you know, there's a few factors around that that we use to be able to do it. But, yeah, generally. So you manufacture locally? No. So we manufacture overseas. We do all our design and everything here. So we've got uh, our office here that we've got uh, coming up to 20 staff now, I think. Um, and, yeah, so everything's based here except we manufacture offshore. Cause and we all our materials. So we, we source, like, um, in terms of the materials, we use 3M tapes. We're using elastics from Germany. We use pulp from sustainable forests in the U.S. We're using um, Sandia. Uh, SAP, which is the absorbency material in the nappy out of Japan, it's the best in the world. So we're trying to get the best components. Mm. Um, yeah. The what best about parts of the um, biodegradable? Because I saw a, a new company started up yeah. just in New Zealand last week. I think it was, um, you know, touting a biodegradable nappy. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. have you, are you looking at that as yeah, well? Yeah, so it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very um, interesting area because biodegradable means a whole different. A lot of things. Um, you can't just say something's biodegradable and throw it in the ground and expect it to, to go away. So it's uh, they got to be under certain conditions. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, so we are working on, a, on a, I think, on 12th prototype at the moment on, on one that we're looking at launching. Um, but we're, when we bring it to market, we want it to be really well. It needs, it needs to be attainable for the consumer and price-wise. Um, and it has to be of a quality that's going to work because that, those are the two barriers currently in that market. Uh, so it's a big area for us in terms of R&D. Price versus function, right? Yeah. I mean, we need to tick all the boxes. So, I mean, yeah. no one's really been able to crack it yet. Um, because if you can crack mm. making it commercially more viable in terms of the price and making it function as well as what's on the market and make it biodegradable, that's mm. obviously the holy grail, right? If we yeah. can achieve that, yeah, um, that's 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 part of. So uh, that's and we, we see that as a responsibility of our business as well as looking at that area. Um, so we're we're doing a lot of work there at the moment. And I think we we want to be this brand is about being relevant. And it's about being relevant to, to these new generations coming through. And most mums are now millennials. And people are starting to care about this stuff. And people care about transparency. People care about being, you know, having these, these 
this this part of the, the brand. So for us, Rascals is going to be, you know, one of the major pillars is going to be how do we keep remaining relevant, mm-hmm. and so that side of it is going to be really important to us going so forward. Like I mean, the- this is in its infancy, right? We're only nine months in the market mm-hmm. in New Zealand, um, and we're going to grow to like it's pretty crazy big, pretty fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So how do you decide on strategy? I mean, how do you, how does the dynamic work between you two? So generally, and um, Louise, obviously. Yeah, and Louise. So generally, Louise and I work on the on the back end, sort of the, the product development side of it. Um, and and Nick and I work closely, but generally he works on this the the global sales. Side so you of went it. to school together? Is that hanging yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. So we uh, went to school since we were thirteen at uh, Cambridge. So yep, uh, Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's. Yeah, and then. Uh, and then obviously kept in touch after school quite a bit, and then we went on holiday together and um, put it together. So, yeah. how have things changed since Nick got involved, Grant? In the business, obviously, it's 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 definitely skyrocketed. Um, so before Nick um, got involved, we were look we were online trading for a few months, and um, you know we we had a, we had a great little following uh, that really loved the products. We knew the product was great, but we needed the distribution, and uh, that's where Nick obviously um, saw the, the bigger picture of the whole thing and, and got involved and, and exploded it that way. So and do you think thinking big is really important? Is that yeah. the difference? Thinking big is everything, right, yeah. in my opinion. Like I said to Grant, <clears throat> I said, well, I'm going to get involved in this, and it was kind of the right timing because I get asked to be involved in lots of things, but I was really, really closely looking at these challenger brands in the US and just fascinated by the way they were becoming multi-billion dollar mm-hmm. brands in two, three years. Um, you know, in the billions, Halo Top's already valued at $3 billion, right, after four years in business. And so I said to Grant, like, if we're going to do this, we're going to we're going to go big. We're going to work mm-hmm. with all the biggest retailers in the world. We're going to work with the mm-hmm. biggest distribution. We're going to create a commercial model that solves all these retailers' problems. We're going to go into the category and create, you know, a market math around it that completely works. And we're going to use big scale of marketing in terms of socially and digitally driven paid ads and where, um, you know, it's amazing. You know, Facebook now has something like reported to have 29,000 data points on every individual person. So the AI and optimization of ads and targeting is incredible. So that macro shift is truly amazing because before big brands would spend media out here and they could lock out all these challenger brands. It was impossible to reach your consumer unless you spent, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on, on marketing. Now you can advertise here and basically reach all of your audience and so targeted. And so that shift alone in a macro sense globally presents a massive opportunity for these digitally driven, data driven brands to come in and start challenging these big categories. That along with, you know, changes like reviews have become more powerful than the brand. And so, or as powerful as brands. So before you used to trust a brand and that gave you the validation as to whether the product was good. Now you'll look at reviews as to whether the product's good. So that's a big shift. And then, you know, this factor that, you know, millennials and Gen Z no longer necessarily want to, um, I think there was a report out from McKinsey that said 77% of millennials no longer want to buy the same brands as their parents did. And, uh, you know, three in four millennials and Gen Zers will trust content that they consume through their social and digital media rather than traditional advertising. And so there are these big shifts happening. And then there are other shifts happening because online retail is eroding margin um, for bricks and mortar. And when you have margin erosion in bricks and mortar, it means that brand differentiation for retail becomes more important. So we used all of these big macro shifts that were happening around the world. And we said, how do we use these shifts this disruption that's happened to go on and actually help solve problems within the category that all our retail partners face. And so that's essentially, um, you know, we came up with a really, really, really sound commercial strategy um, behind it. And that's the reason we've gone and um, we're going to be able to grow this business so big so fast. What's your ambition for the business, Graham? Um, obviously, I mean, obviously when Nick got involved, I had to make that decision that, you know, was I going to get jump on this train or, or not? And obviously it's a no, uh, it was a no brainer for me. It turned uh, out to be the bullet train. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, our workload at the moment is, is intense, but, um, you know, I enjoy it. I love going to work and I love doing it because it's something that started from scratch. Um, and the ambition, the ambition to go with it is just a... It's just to fly with it, right? And yeah, we want we want to be one of the biggest snappy brands for sure. Like yeah. hands down, in the next few years, right? Globally, yeah. and you know, it is a big space and a huge mm-hmm. market. And so, you sort of, I had this sort of thing that, you know, we built Zuru out of Asia, and we've got seventeen offices and over five thousand staff, and we've built that really quickly. But I kind of, I'm spending more time back in New Zealand, and I kind of wanted to show that we can build sort of brands, global brands, out of New Zealand because so many companies in New Zealand sort of focus on New Zealand, then maybe a bit of Australia and they don't even fully commit to that. 
but there's this ability to actually build these brands big globally with the biggest sort of corporations in the world. And so, you know, part of what we're doing at Rascals is we're running what we call like a meritocracy. So we're getting lots of young talent. We're trying to hire like some of New Zealand's best young great, talent. Great and talent at the university. At the and moment, we're, yeah. we're bringing all, all these sort of young young people on board and we're trying to align kind of their incentives and the success of the business to, to, to these young people and giving them the mm. path to kind of achieve. So we're really hiring lots of young, super ambitious, super smart kids mm. Waikato um, that are coming university. on board. Waikato yeah, university. quite a few out of Waikato yeah. University yeah, and quite a few well. out of AUT in Auckland and stuff. Yeah. So um, sort of our, our path is, you know, we're creating millennial and Gen Z brands. We want millennials to sort of be building them. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's pretty exciting being able to do that in New Zealand to build, you know, this will be probably New Zealand's, one of New Zealand's fastest growing companies ever. Um, if not the, you know, by the, by, by within one year. Yeah, and, uh, got a big year. And, uh, and, uh, and so that's, that's yeah. pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting to have all this talent that we're bringing on board, all these young kids that we're sending Absolutely. all around the world. Um, they're getting a great experience and they're doing a phenomenal job. Mm. So. All right, well, thanks very much, Grant and Nick. No worries. No worries. Thanks very much.